Hello Delos Tribe and welcome to the season finale lap 2 Indian Ocean SV Delos Megasim. It's, it's a big episode. It's like 56 minutes long. We've taken 4,000 minutes of footage over the period of like 88 days of our time in Cape Town and we've turned it into a massive episode. And actually the three of us have edited parts of this episode so it's the yeah. first time that we've all contributed to one single episode Pretty editing cool. style. And we're also super excited to introduce our two new crew members, Lisa and Liz, in this episode. Yeah, a lot, lot of, of things, good, a lot yeah. of good things happen. So we realized we're breaking like a lot of recommended YouTube rules about keeping videos short and pumping out lots of them, but that's the way we are. We're just <laughs> gonna do it this way. If you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know. Just leave us a comment on how you feel about longer format stuff. Yeah. Anyway, you guys ready? Yeah. Let's let's pause it. Grab a beer, a whiskey, or a wine. Yeah, that's and, a good idea. Yeah, and as enjoy. always, because you've got 55, 56 minutes of goodness mm -hmm. coming your way. <laughs> All right. All right. Roll it. Roll it. <laughs> Previously on Delos, we flew to La Rochelle, France, to see the birthplace of Delos. We toured the Amel Yacht Shipyard and sailed on one of our younger sisters, a brand spanking new Amel 55. Ah, oh, it feels so amazing to be back in Cape Town. I think we've kind of fallen in love with this city. Delos are tied up like in the same place as we were last year, which is really cool. You know, we can park Delos in the middle of the city, like right smack in the middle of the v and waterfront. Cape Town summer is like, I don't know, I guess that's one of the big reasons why we kind of came back. And we can walk to like the shops and the bars and the restaurants. And for us, that's something very special because it's actually pretty affordable here. But I think it's really good to have this time here to kind of rewind and get excited for the next season. Buddy Ian lent us his car, uh, so we're pretty stoked about that. Within like a five or ten minute drive, we can actually be like right at Table Mountain. We can go hiking up uh, Lion's Head. In fact, I think we're going to do that this afternoon. We have a few weeks, so I guess almost two months, so it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited for another summer in Cape Town. So we've been in pretty much full working mode since arriving and just trying to get as much done now as we can when we have internet and power and stuff like this. This is our office. This is it. This is the working place, <laughs> which is a bit funny, but it's all right. Everything we need right here. Yeah. We left Cape Town eight months ago for our second lap in the Indian Ocean. We hop from island to island 
and beach to beach, visiting some of the most amazing places in the world. Most of the time we are offline, living completely off the grid. No internet, no power, no dining out. Just us and our little floating home Delos. After over 7,000 miles of sailing, we finally closed the loop, arriving back in Cape Town. And it felt so perfect, so right, to spend a few months at the dock getting ready for the next adventure. Yeah, it's just cool, though. Yeah, it's just perfect Delos style. Dude, it's so Delos style. Plenty of room to fit all the, all the gear. Got a few missing panels, which is good for us. What did you say about who gave it to us or anything? We talked a little bit about it last night, Ian. Good old Ian lent us his pajero. So this is a new concept that we haven't really talked about yet. And it's the wall of fame slash shame. So this is Ian. He's a very generous South African guy that let us borrow his car for a couple months we're here. Uh, Dominican girl, very awesome. And our friend Josh. Another beautiful Dominican girl who made my birthday very special. Oh, that's a Dominican oh, girl teabagging tea bagging Brian. Oh, with the actual tea bag. You're sleeping. That's Ian and his beautiful wife. Ian, uh, bringing over some special goodness for us. Brian smoking some special goodness. Shot. I mean, I'll put that one there. Yeah, that's a good, that's that's a good, good. spot. How does that feel, guys? <laughs> so awesome. Feels good. All right, we ready? Crank up the beast? Yeah. Oh. So this guy, uh, Ian, that lives here in Cape Town, he sent us a message and, and likes the videos and said he had a spare car sitting around that needed to be driven. And uh, he came and dropped it off, so we have a car for the summer. It's got a CD in it. Oh. <laughs> Ian! I never pictured him listening, smoking a joint, listening to this. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, people surprise me all the time. Stick to the left, I think. Okay, so you drive on the left side. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. O
So today on Delos it is stinking hot and we have decided to do boat work today. So it is nearly noon and guess who has yet to arise from his princely chamber? Mr. Brady. Snoozing the day away. Here's our current list of things to do. Not too bad. We'll get them done. All right, so the first step in any boat project is the proper attire. So I've got on the old ratty Esfidelos tee that has been stained. Look at the condition of these shorts. These are perfect. Boat project shorts, ain't nothing gonna mess those up. And uh, we are on our way here from Durban and we were motoring out of the marina and noticed that the RPMs wouldn't go above like 17 or 1800. That's the problem, that's as high as the RPM will go right there. Which either means that the prop is super dirty or that the turbo is not engaging. So that's the turbo right there. Not too hard to get off, just a few bolts. Well, I've got the turbo off and there is a lot of crap in there. Like you can see, there's the impeller. The impeller is right there and it is spinning, so it's not seized up, but see this, this is like a gate valve here, and it's got some weird kind of, I don't know what that is, carbon buildup or something on there. So that valve is not open, able to open and close. So I'm gonna clean that up, get some of this stuff out of here, get this big chunk. I don't know what this is. Shouldn't be there though. Sometimes on these passages to save fuel, we run the engine real low, like between 1,000 and 1,500 RPM, and it never uh, heats the turbo up. And we've been told that after you know a long time running it, you should run it really high RPM, like engage the turbo and let it heat up to burn it out. And we haven't been doing that. So now I'm done here on Saturday. Slow going, getting there. Couldn't ask for like a better afternoon to sit out here on the dock and chip away a carbon and a turbocharger though. <laughs> Could be worse. What's going on here, Bjorn? Ooh, we're making progress. So I cleaned this part out and it turns out that that hole right there, I don't know if you can see that big hole right there, that is not supposed to be there. So what happened is this piece corroded over time and then the salt water that cools this thing came through here and then came through this hole and squirted right into the back of the turbo and that's what caused those big chunks of carbon in there. So that's weird. So I bought, I got a new one. Had to get this shipped in from the UK and you can wow. see how that's how it's supposed to look. What a difference, That's huh? how it's not supposed to look. So I'm gonna put this in, but then it created some other problems because if you look at this, this is the new one from Volvo. This is the old one. They're different sizes, of course. It's always something weird. So then I have to take this piece over to Marco at Grundy and look at that nice job he did. So he just cut this pipe where the exhaust goes and now it's the right size. You put a little reducer on there. I bought a new exhaust pipe, which now fits on there to go between like that. And the other weird thing I found is, check this out. This piece, look in there, this thing had started to separate. So I don't know if you can see that, that big bulb in there. Yeah. That's not supposed to be like that. What is that? I don't know. And if you feel the tubing, it's like, over years, I think the heat has just hit that and started to se se separate the oh. the construction of this because it should just be like, you know, a round tube for the exhaust to flow through nicely. So that was definitely like a choke point on exhaust as well. While I'm at it, in there, I also ordered new injectors. Oh, oh. Almost. That one's all carboned up, look at that. Grody. So some of the symptoms when the injectors need replacement is you'll get reduced power, you get less fuel efficiency, and uh, you'll start to get like a, a more sooty black exhaust, not the same stuff that you get when it's burning oil. 
but uh, it, it starts to leave like this dirty film on the side of the boat. So I always kind of know it's time. Here, just line up the holes. Nice, they're nice sticky. Yeah. Then the last step is these guys forgot to send us the the washers. So there's supposed to be these uh, copper washers that sit on the top here and they spaced out and didn't send them with the nozzles but since it takes so long to get here he told me that all you really need to do is a process called annealing and I looked it up on YouTube and basically what you do is you take a torch and you keep the copper washer up until it glows red and what this is supposed to do from what I've researched is it just heats up the copper and it softens it again and that way when you put all this back together it forms a good seal And now, scary. Turbo's engaged. Sweet. We sailed Delos pretty hard, and from time to time, I like to go up the rig just to check things out. Here I am up the mizzen mast, inspecting the triadic stay and AIS antenna. We were checking things off the list at a pretty good pace, but there was still plenty more work to do. What's going on here? Well, we're having a little problem with the, the depth and speed and temperature sensor and the, the temperature sensor is sort of stopped working. So the guys tell me that we have to pull it out and send it back to the company, which means that we're going to have a hole in the bottom of Delos for a few seconds before we put the plug in. Okay, on the count of three, one, two, three. Was that was easy. Easy. That was pretty brilliant easy. tonight. <laughs> nice work, brother. <laughs> Dude, we didn't even get any water. That was great. Last high time five. it shot up like this high. <laughs> How is it going? You know, I'm not the best sewer to be honest, but I think it's all right. So our sewing machine is actually pretty kaput. So we borrowed our neighbor's sewing machine, which is an awesome little beast. Sail right, it's awesome. How's it going, Brian? It's going good. You know, the thing that sucks is we just got our sail back from from the sail guys here, and we asked them to fix one thing and then check the whole thing for like anything that needed repairs and then repair as necessary. And we were putting it up, and we found like two rips in the leech. So I don't know, it's a hassle, but you know, the worst things I could be doing with my time. It's all right. <laughs> so a little bit of sewing in the sunshine. Look who we ran into. <laughs> Random Swiss dude from Madagascar. <laughs> Pascal. We first met Pascal in Madagascar like six months earlier. And here he was again, showing up out of nowhere in Cape Town, ready to spend a weekend with us at a local music festival. Now what's the plan? Going <laughs> wild this weekend. <laughs> There's a festival this weekend up the creek. And so we're getting all of our gear set up and we bought floaties. Check these out. I think this is either Brady's yeah. or Pascal's. Mm -hmm. We got matching floaties. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of this one. This is one that I got because it's a floaty, but it also can hold up to 30 beers plus ice. That's, there. that's amazing. So the idea is to sit in the river like this, consume beer while listening to music from the stage. So the stage faces and the river. That's what we've been told and it's supposed to be very cool. So we're going to, I think it's like a two hour drive. We're going to drive up there, take our pedal and uh, gear. We got tents. It's like a little weekend <laughs> extravaganza up the creek. Cool. Pascal's not going with a tent. No, I don't have a tent. I either be a guest in Brady's tent 
or in some ladies tent <laughs> or last option in the car or outside because you got a nice floaty too or on the floaty but the point is you heard this this night yeah this raining sound yeah so if it's raining and on the floaty it will not be so comfy i guess <laughs> We'll see. Okay. Festival is never a big issue, right? <laughs> we're almost sorted. We have a pretty extensive checklist on my phone that we're gonna go through real quick. Headlights, rash guards, cameras, passport copies, bug spray, ganja, grandpa, floaties, sleeping bags, tents, yes, yes. sunblock, sunnies, hats, cups, juice, lime, soda, beer, vodka. We're all picking that up on the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> Festival. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. All right. You probably hear us talk about it over and over, but as much as we love sailing and traveling, we also really love sticking around a place for a while, getting into the local culture and traveling by land. With Delo safe at the dock, it was a perfect opportunity to take our newly borrowed car, dubbed Betty, on a little road trip into the South African bush for a weekend of, well, we really didn't know. All right. Okay. What's that? <laughs> About two hours into the trip, we realized we hadn't planned so well. The only thing we'd packed was tents, pool toys, and a few beers. It was time to make a little provisioning stop. Obviously, we were in a bit of a party mode because all we got was beer, vodka, beer, mixers, some bread, more beer, and tequila. What do you have there, Rob? I have a tequila called Patron. It will give us the right taste for the weekend. Is that what it says on it? No, that's what I said about it. <laughs> what do you think, Rob? I think um, we are driving in the middle of nowhere. It's raining. It's pouring. No sign of people, of any living thing around here. What's the, what's the name looks, of this area? It's called Little Moon. <laughs> it's called Little Moon. Yeah, it looks like Little Moon. Uh, I think we are dumping in in a big adventure, it looks like. We're getting close. Oh, Alright, we found something that looks good. Looking good. Shots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelsey, how are we doing? We're doing good. Our tents are up and we're almost set up to go and just relax for the rest of the weekend. It's looking cozy. Show me the coziness. Quite cozy in here. It's very cozy. We have the drinks outside here. Just as we got camp set up and poured our first drinks of the festival, the rain rolled in. It actually turned out to be the perfect opportunity to meet the neighbors and of course use their rain shelter. The rain only stuck around for a few hours before the sun blasted its way through. The rest of the festival went by in a bit of a blur and to be honest we didn't film very much. Maybe a little montage will give you a glimpse of what it felt like. <laughs> it's ready. It's Good as gold. 
continued way into the night and we even got a chance to see one of the most famous Afrikaans bands around Jack Perro and what do you think he sings about biscuits and biltong This is actually the last video clip we recorded at the festival. But I'm sure you get an idea of what an awesome experience we had. Being able to really see what the local vibes are like in this part of the world. There's somebody yelling my name outside. <laughs> But see, you're supposed to take him captive first and not show him a note. I know. Hey, you guys should squirt him more with those guns. There you go. The note says, to whoever cares about Brady, we have taken Brady hostage. If you ever want him back, come to us with the ransom of chocolate. These kids are playing for keeps, man. We met the pirate crews of Convivia and Yamaya in Madagascar. Tucker even gave Brady a Madagascar tattoo on Delos. They're a super cool cruiser family, so we convinced him to come to Cape Town and be our neighbors for a bit. Kid boats always seem to travel in a pack, and now their little pirates were terrorizing Mr. Brady. They're tied me up like a bunch of crazies. They are a bunch of crazies. Mr. Kiss, chocolates! Poor Brady. Stop it. Okay, here. This is chocolate, but I don't know if it's gluten-free chocolate. Okay. Hey, we want things of and you get Get him, Get him. Get him. Get him back. You're wanting the chocolate! Two water. Hey, you got home? What are you guys cooking today? What are we cooking today, Ruby? I'm making salsa and then I'm gonna make guacamole and we're making tacos and he's making tongue and We're making Mexican. Wow. It's, it's date night for their parents. Tucker, <laughs> Tucker and Vic are going out to dinner. It's, a, it's Brady sitting night, isn't it? 
<laughs> Can't leave me hanging, man. <laughs> hey, dude, look, he's trying to high five you. He can't even see me because he's got his invisible mask on. How is our fiesta doing? Paco fiesta. It's going pretty good. I think we're doing alright. We went pretty quick. That was the fastest we ever cooked a fiesta. We had a lot of help. We did have a lot of help. Look at those. No, 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 no. Wait, do we have <laughs> it's the most random thing I've ever seen. It's really random. <laughs> Why does he do that, Ruby? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a little pirate man. He's like going in this corner. There's more kids. Hey, They're multiplying. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay, Ruby, introduce all the kids to the world. Lilo, Azalea, it's Azalea, but it's pronounced Azalea. 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 Finn. Noah. These families have been sailing around the world for years with their crazy little pirates. Together. All the time. I know they love their kids, but imagine the excitement when we offer to give the adults a night alone. It's the least we could do for our friends. Plus, we were actually having a lot of fun. And in return, they offered us free labor for a little project we had in mind. And save us all. Oh, 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 thank you, Mother. That's enough. Papa. No one goes outside the reef. So you want to see the benefit of being at the marina with a bunch of kid boats? We put them to work. What we're doing is we are cutting up our old Jenica that we blew on the coast of Madagascar. What do you guys think? Hard. Yeah. And we're making hearts because it's, val it's Valentine's Day. Happy yeah. Valentine's Day. Heart. What are you doing, Kaza? I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm spray painting on the Buddha dude on our old pieces of our old sail that we're gonna send to our awesome patrons. So it's a little bit of a experiment but I think it turns out pretty well so you spray on there and then cool. voila it's not perfect but it's pretty cool all right we'll send these off to our supporters yeah What are we doing, brother? Oh man, we're having a we're having a meeting because we're having a Delos party on Saturday, and the kids are gonna be at the gate letting people in and, and making candy and, and making lemonade. candy and making lemonade to Whoa. sell to people. So we're trying to have a meeting, but Finn is attacking people by kissing him. <laughs> oh no! So we should ask him what to do with a drunken sailor. Yeah. Hang him upside down until he sobers. Hang him upside down until he sobers. Do. Got it. Done. What is it? So you have to ask them at the gate, what do you do with a drunken sailor? And they have to, and say, they have to say, shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty it's razor. It's part of the song of, uh, what do you do with a Perfect. <laughs> sort of. It's you too. Yeah, no idea, really. uh, we've got the uh, gin and tonic keg ready to tap. The guys at Drifter Brewing are fellow sailors here in Cape Town. It's very exciting. I'm getting my first tattoo. Look at this guy. Are you sure about that placement, Kaza? I think it looks pretty good. I feel like a mermaid right now. <laughs> what you want to do though is just observe it without any judgment at all. Don't assign any value to it. Just feel what you're feeling as a raw sensation and it will start to feel really good. Okay? I will tell you if you need to stop. Okay. If I'm gonna faint or something. Start the gate. This is a sound that makes me feel nervous. It's kind of 
kind of weird, isn't it? That's so bad, huh? Wow. Weird feeling. It's like somebody's scraping into your skin. A little painful. Yeah. Hot spots. But when he goes back over it again. Yeah, that was real painful. And you're out of the uh... So good. Uh, I watched the whole thing. I was zoomed in on that one too. Whew. <laughs> My palms are sweaty. <laughs> your, endorphin, your endorphins are already releasing. Uh, complete. Complete. Let me see it. And wrapped up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> little boat. They like little boat, like Della's mm -hmm. baby boat. Not little too bad. Not too How did bad. it feel? Not too bad. Yeah, it was cool. I was sweating a lot, but... <laughs> you ready for your next one, Tim? No. <laughs> 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 Here, Brown. I'm ready. I've been waiting a while to do this. The third tap. First one was in Fatu Hiva, French Polynesia. Second one is in Australia, and now the third one, South Africa. We have so many cameras set up to look at this setup. Jesus. I feel like the lines I just did on you were some of my best, and I'm excited to draw some more. All right, Brian, how you feeling? Ready, dude. You Let's are ready. Roll. I am ready. Where's Brady? Just decide where I should start. Where's Brady? All right, guys, it's time to be quiet. Kids, out of here. They can't trust us kids. You guys no, can I can't trust you to be quiet. That is absolutely for sure. <laughs> nice. Oh, f Brian, that was an awesome first line. Is that a good line? Oh, yeah, I like it a lot. Good line. That was a good line. Yeah. How does it feel, Rayon? Getting a good one. Yeah? The only problem is I'm running low on my beer. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to have a topper. <laughs> Assistance in the beer department. Oh, I like the half ball. Well, no, actually, you know what? You know what I mean? I Which one do you like better? Tucker was on a roll. As the night wore on, we decided to move the party next door to Convivia for Mr. Brady's tat. Yeah. This yeah. is exactly what yeah, I wanted. Happy. Yeah, man, it's it's Neptune. Oh, it does look pretty it's good. It's Neptune though. blowing clouds out of his mouth. And then, in true sailor tradition, and fueled by many, many rums, it was the Braidster's turn to give it a go. And it's my turn. <laughs> so it's all amateur tattoo style, and he's learned a lot going on my skin. So I'm about to go. Yeah, this is each one ink oh. one. Yeah. So I'm gonna give him a swallow. This is the deal here. My first, this is my first line, brother. No, deeper. Deeper. Ah, yeah, that's f***ing good. Mm. Alright, stop. Swipe it. Brady, you're a natural. Come find us. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, shit, guys. Wow, this has been so much fun. Dude. I know. I can't believe our neighbors are leaving. Everybody's leaving us again. I know, same as last year. We always do the last ones. Like. <laughs> Bye, guys. Love you. Safe travels. And now Delos is all by herself again. There they go, huh? That's it. It's a good stay though, good neighbor's stay. It was stay. a good stay. The best damn neighbors we ever had. <laughs> Mobile tattoo studio. Cool people to hang out with. Just good people, man. I don't know what's up with this fog, dude, but the seasons are changing. And I think it's about ready to start thinking about going north for warmer weather. A new crew is showing up. Elizabeth is here. <laughs> Hello, I thought I would introduce myself. Um, I don't know what to say, Brian. 
take two. Okay, so uh, I come from a town called Nuneaton in Warwickshire, England, and I moved in with my housemate Steve, and I was not in a very happy place. I was just in the normal nine to five, and um, and it was at the weekends we would wake up really hungover. At Steve, we would have like this YouTube channel on, and I'd come downstairs and I'd be like, "Oh God, what is this?" And he was like, "Oh, it's a uh, it's a uh, sailing channel about uh, these people called S V Delos." So I was like, "All right." Whatever. I couldn't. I never had control over the remote in that house. Uh, so I sat down, had my bacon breakfast, and I watched the first episode. And I was literally hooked. And then for a year, I followed SV Delos, wanting to have that adventure and not actually thinking I could do that. Because how would you? Where would you start? And I think I was just constricted by normal society, thinking that. You should get a job, the 9 to 5 office, you should do this, you should get a car, you should get a mortgage. And then it was after a terrible, terrible date that I was coming back home in a taxi and I saw SV Delos uh, done a Facebook post and they tagged Mr. Brady in it so I was like really drunk and I was thinking, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reply to Mr. Brady, blah, 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 so just send him a drunk text message. Um, Facebook basically and I to my surprise heard back after a few months of messaging back and forth as birds talking about arm wrestles human uh, human pyramids and jobs and life aspirations and stuff um, I got the question one day of hey do you want to come to South Africa and I was like yeah, yeah, I really do. I really do. <laughs> and now I've just found out that we'll be going sailing. I mean, I came over first not really knowing, you know, just to hang out, you know. But it turns out that we're going to be sailing to Namibia. And it's more than I could have ever hoped for. I could never actually, if you, if I look back at myself from being in Eaton, sitting there with my, with my, mate, my housemate Steve, with a cup of tea in hand, hung over, wrapped in a blanket, watching SV Dust, thinking, I wish I could do that. Turns out you can. Um, you just gotta take that leap, and take the leap that scares you the most. So yeah, that's that's my life. Uh, let's hope uh, you enjoy seeing a bit more of it. So, cue in whoosh. And now we are on the way to the airport to go pick up the last crew contest winner from our last contest, Lisa. And we're going to go meet her at the airport. This is Lisa's I want to be a Delos pirate video. And she won over our hearts without even saying a word. So Lisa does this fine art stuff. Lisa, she is really tough. Whiskey for my dolly. Oh, whiskey made upon her clothes. Whiskey, Johnny. Oh, whiskey gave her this red nose. Whiskey for my dolly. One whiskey with the Dallas crew. Whiskey, Johnny. That's one big thing she'd love to do. Whiskey for my dolly. Don't think she's drinking all day long. Whiskey, Johnny. That's just a very old seaman song. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> uh, do you want to go sailing? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. Oh, nice. Not. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you soon. See you soon. See you soon. It's exciting times. Seasons are starting. We'll see if she's here somewhere. <laughs> we're trying to we're showing pictures of Lisa so that we can make sure that we like Get the right see her person. right away. I'm sure she'll person. recognize us as well. There she is. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Oh, so nice. So nice. 
Nice to meet you. Hi, brother. Oh, oh. Oh. Have you been excited, Lisa? <laughs> Nervous or excited? Most excited. Both. Huh? <laughs> but I'm excited. Uh, and I'm happy. I know. <laughs> You're finally here. After so long. Like, you're planning yeah. this for a while. Yeah, huh? I mean, it's really crazy. One year, actually. Yeah, right? one year. It's been it's crazy. It's really one year now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Tired. Yeah? But I am good. This is Lisbeth. Uh, hi, Karen. Yes. I can't hook you. <laughs> Don't hook me. I'm just bad, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our crew so. is almost complete. It's down to here. Yeah. That's all right. Is it right here or something? Am I allowed to come on board? Permission Please to board. enter. Enter. Welcome to Delos. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> And after patiently waiting for a whole year, I was finally here, on Delos. This really feels like the right place for me, and I couldn't be happier. So let the adventures begin. So how do we keep the whole crew fed when crossing an ocean, you might wonder? Well, it all starts with this list. We will now pack Delos with enough food to feed six people more than seven months with a total budget of 3,000 US dollars. So right now me and Lisa goes through everything that we have on the boat and everything on our shopping list. So trying to figure out what to buy and what not to buy and in what quantities. <laughs> Thinking about what people like, what people don't like. We have lentils, quinoa, sesame seed, chia seed, rice, rolled oats, muesli, baking powder, breadcrumbs, knäckebröd, glass noodles, spaghetti, couscous, flour, sugar, <laughs> everything you can think of. Hello. So Hello. this morning, me and the girls hey. Hello. are going on the first provisioning run. So we're going to stock up the boat with basically as much food as we can. And yeah, this is the first day, so... <laughs> Wish us good luck! Yay! First stop, pick and pay! Cans! <laughs> Doing cans, Right on top, take the labels off, and we're good to go. Nice. Why? So the cockroaches doesn't lay eggs in between. I love the glue. Yeah. So ladies, we look like we're organizing a lot today. We are organizing. Things are hardcore because Karen's got her light on. <laughs> You're like one of those fish in the deep. What? <gasps> deep sea fish. Deep sea fish. I feel like a deep sea fish. Mm -hmm. oh. Stuff. It's been crazy organizing everything you wouldn't think that you would have to think of. You've had to think of. <laughs> you have to consider books, you have to consider size, you have to consider where you're putting it, you have to consider how long you're going to be traveling for. <laughs> right now I am a mixture of the scent of sweat and black tea. Um, but yeah, everything's all good. It's awesome. Just prepping to leave. Get everything all packed. So today is our second provisioning run, and Miss E will drive the car for us. Um, Do you know where the gas is? <laughs> gas? Gas. Petrol. No. Oh shit. But so we're gonna go to Ian, actually the guy that lent us his car. So we're gonna go to his food store because he owns this awesome kind of food store warehouse that he supplies to all the restaurants so first up is gonna be there because we're gonna see what he has and kind of if we can just buy all the food from him Hi Ian! Hi. Hello! <laughs> we made it! Well <laughs> oh, cool. uh, look at all the food! So we're just going through the list here with Ian and he's gonna mark down like all the stuff that he actually has in the warehouse and then we'll go and Explore. This warehouse is a gold mine. Ian supplies restaurants for a living. So it was the one stop shop for all the bulk food and supplies still on our list. Plus, he even delivers. 
Okay, so um, that's probably the best outcome that we could ever have hoped for. Uh, Ian is uh, such a sweetheart and helpless. He smells so good. He smells so good. Hi, Ian. So, let's go home I want to, to the boat. Tequila. Here Ian comes, <laughs> the truck behind him. <laughs> Look at these guys. Cool truck. We've never done this before. <laughs> this is awesome. I feel very like a housewife, you know? Yeah, we, yeah we, we've changed the game on provisioning, haven't we? <laughs> God damn you, South Africa. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ian. Yeah, it's my Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, man. This guy has helped us out so much today. I know. So much. He's going in for the hug. <laughs> I'm um, just doing a illustration for our good friend Ian. He's done a lot of favors for us, lent in us his car, Betty. And he's just been absolutely awesome. So we all wanted to do him something special because I illustrate back at home. I want to do them something like nice. So that's what we've got. So, wanted to do you uh, a picture oh, of all of us. Nice. Just to say, like really you, nice. you, uh, you mean a lot to us, yeah. and we wanted you to feel like we're wherever you go. Oh, love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You've you've made our time in Cape Town very special. Though. Yeah, and we don't know it's what we would have actually physically done without you. <laughs> Take a lot. Of <laughs> yeah. A lot of Ubers for sure. Yeah. For me, it was. The, the pleasure was all mine, <laughs> even though you think it was, it was yours. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. That's right. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we have our new crew member coming tomorrow, Alex from America. So we're absolutely psyched and excited because that's the completed crew then. And then we can look forward to setting sail. Um, so yeah, exciting. Okay, I must continue my tea juices. All the best. Up next, our last crew member Alex arrives to Delos. We go on some epic adventures in Cape Town, drop a new generator into Delos, and make friends with the legendary Lisa Blair. <laughs> okay, sweet. First thing in the morning. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> Like it? I like it a lot. Are you, have you never sailed before? No. I struggle in the bath. Yeah, it's actually it's fine. Take care. Where'd I put this? <laughs> <On the table. laughs> I've never had so many people mimic my accent in my entire life. Oh shit, what is that? That's all right. You went the wrong way. I'm about to explain the words flog, bevy, brew, Ain't out, out. Look at the one. Look at we this. might as well keep. You know, I've heard that musicians that learn to play weed are <laughs> <laughs> learn to play music when they're smoking weed. <laughs> no, to up and ladies and gentlemen means um, you know the ladies front bottom. <laughs> Say vagina. Vagina. Thank you for clearing that up. Oh, for fuck's sake! It wasn't even recording. <laughs> ah, noob. I hope you're better at uh, tattooing than 
film me. <laughs> These girls are impressive. What they say is not what I'm worth. <laughs> Quite bright. Oh shit, the battery is dead.